that would look like a shadow. Otherwise, it starts to fragment and confuse the viewer. We have to keep the light side light, shadow side dark, and um, <coughs> maintain that separation. That's why the Terminator is so valuable, because it's the dividing nerve, it's the fence <coughs> between the Hatfields and the McCoys. But we all do it. We all uh, put lights inside shadows that are too light. We all put <coughs> darks inside lights, the light side that are too dark. Because in a way, it's sort of an optical illusion. When you when you've got uh, when you've got all of this dark surrounding that white of the eye that's in shadow, that white of the eye does look light. And if that's all you're comparing it against, you'll be tempted to make it too light. But you don't want your comparison to just be what's next to it. You want your comparison to be somewhere else. You may say, well, it is lighter than that, but is it that light, or even that light? So comparisons are awfully valuable to make sure that your values are in check. Now, normally at this stage, I like to do more um, measuring and to assure that I've got things in the right place. You know, I'd want to measure, make sure I've got that ear in the right place, make sure I've got some of this in the right uh, proportion. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to be quite as fastidious about that. I think I'll just step back. And... Do you guys know who Dan Gearhart is? You ever heard of Dan Gearhart? I saw him do a demo and he, he had a big audience and about every 10 minutes from his painting he'd, he'd walk all the way back and see how it looked from back here. He kept walking back because this is, this is the, where the rubber meets the road. It's not when you're close up to your drawing. You'll be fooled when you're close up to your drawing. But when you get back, that's when you see what matters. So you probably heard how valuable it is to make sure that you step back from your work and get a, a distant view of it. Because that's going to keep the detail at bay and present the more important thing. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start separating some of the values inside the light side. But as I do that, I'm going to look for some major planes and I'm going to look for some gradations. So I'm thinking in terms of, you know, that plane versus this plane, this plane versus this plane, this plane versus this plane, in the largest sense of the word, so that I have those those big planes and those important gradations happening ahead of detail. So I can see a plane change happening here, so I'm gonna send that back in value. Uh, there's a lot of busy information here, but I wanna simplify it in, at this stage so that it's, a, it's more of a solid plane. I've got a ton of information down here, but I'm going to simplify it. So I'm looking for patches that get a little darker than other areas. So it's kind of like I'm driving a half tone down the face. Even though there's so much information going on in there, I could I could get lost. And that's the value of making sure that you see the broad shapes. That's the value of making sure you're conceptualizing this and this before you get into detail. So it's important for me to see that band that cuts through 
the, the life side. And um, I'm gonna lift up another plane, another van right here. Oops, that's too much. I always like to keep two Chevys, one that's clean and one that's a little dirtier. That'll save my clean one. You know, it's important that we work like sculptors. Because when you think about it, a sculptor who's working in clay has no choice but to lay down mass and major planes first. They just simply have no choice. If we've got a choice, we could gun for the detail right out of the gate, but if we do that, we're gonna get ourselves in trouble. So we have to think like a sculptor. How would a sculptor put together a head? And again, at this stage, I want to step back because that's so important to make sure that I put those bands in the right position. Is, is the form starting to turn? Is, is it looking like an unfinished sculpture? That's what I'm hoping for. Mm -hmm. But I've always been taught that if we're trying to do something like that, everything is relative, everything is, so we're kind of measuring everything from everything else. You must be so good at this that you're kind of doing it like freehand. You know, you're kind of just seeing it and just creating it. So with regards to measuring, how important is that for us who are not experts like you? Well, well um, and I still need to do it, too. I just have to do it less. I just have to do it less. Um, you know, the way I was taught proportions, it was like you started with the top of the head and then the bottom of the head, and you found the halfway line for the eyes, and you broke things up, and you kind of measured out the, those landmarks, and then you slugged in the face to fit it. Um, that meant that you were leading out with measurements, leading out with proportion. I prefer to lead out with shapes. Um, and then go back and see how accurate I was with those shapes. Because shapes for me feel more natural and they're more fun to do. I never, I never really liked doing this kind of measurement. I still do it because I'm not perfect and I have to have some uh, surefire system to get me through those proportions. But my process is I like to go for shapes because I think they're more natural and they, they, you can get a lot done with shapes but they're not as foolproof. And so at this point, once I've got maybe this much down, I really sh should start measuring. So if I had more time, I'd be looking for things like, typically the tip, the bottom of the nose to the top of the eyebrow is the same distance as chin to nose. So that's something that I'd wanna check in, in my drawing, that I do that. Um, another thing is the eyes, of, of course, are halfway. Typically, so chin to eye, eye to the top of the head. I want to make sure I check that. Um, the thing, something that can often get us into trouble is how far back the ear goes. And in fact, I probably should check that. So I'm going to measure. So I'm just going to measure from the corner of the eye to the edge of the ear and just see what it also gives. Looks like it's you know, nose to the eyebrow. So while it's still in this rough stage, that's a good time to start measuring just to make sure things landed in the right place. 
And another good measurement to take is the bridge of the nose is called the glabella over to the edge of the eye here. So that distance right there. And the reason that distance is important to measure is because our left brain wants to expand out that area, that side of the bow of the ship that got foreshortened. So that, that would be another good measurement to take right, right there. Okay. Um, I'm going to go lift up this plane right here. And his face has so much character and so much detail in it that uh, it can be very fun to draw, but it also can be, there can be an allure with all of that detail. Because we see it, you know? We should be forgiven for being lured into detail. Even though it doesn't work, we should be forgiven. <laughs> because that's what's there. That's what's seducing us. That's what's making, that's what's calling out to us. You know, it's, it's like, well, what should I put down if it's not what I'm seeing? Well, something that simplifies is the answer. And then the detail, when we're ready, will flow in. I'm sure you've heard of the value of squinting, right? Because what squinting does, if you can't see the Hatfields from the McCoys, you will when you squint. Because they're, you know, right in here is a pretty challenging area because I've got half tones in there that are pretty dark, and I've got the light, the white of the eye that's in shadow that's pretty light. So that could get jumbled if I'm not careful. But if I squint down, I'm like, oh, okay, that wide of the eye really drops away. And so I won't get tangled in to it. And the half tones blend more in with the light side of the face. So I won't get tangled into those. And all that information will have its due in good time, but it takes some patience to not be in, in a big rush to get that kind of stuff down yet. Because I want to think like a sculptor. I want to I want the bands, the big bands, the planes, the form, the mass. I want that to lead out. So it's important to ignore certain information at this stage. And that's kind of the crux of what I wanted to get across in this demo. In other words, can you get here before you get here, before you go there, before you then jump to the detail? You know, we'll say even with the neck, um, there's a lot of information going on with the neck. You know, it's light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. But if I started slugging in all of that information right out of the gate, I'm going to miss the fact that the neck is a cylinder. So I have to see past what's literally in front of me, all of that information, all those veins, all those muscles, 
and plug in something that will represent a cylinder. So, and sometimes you have to even fake these things because I don't see some of the values. It looks pretty even all the way across, but I'm going to give a gradation of tone there because what I want to represent is that neck is a cylinder. So I have to interject the concept of a cylinder in that area and get it working as a cylinder before I start putting in all those veins and muscles. Because again, those veins and muscles are gourd. I'm going to also think in terms of a plane change right there for the hair. So just the fact that I separated out that value right there, it gave us a directional change. That's one direction, that's another one, and that's another one. So a little bit can go a long way in, in describing directional changes of form. Okay, so now I'm ready to graduate more towards um, some of the minor planes. I still don't want to get into detail yet. This is where it can take a lot of discipline because there could be a temptation at this point to, to just scoot ahead into the detail. But if you can hold back and go, can I give it one more layer of important planes before I jump to the detail? And again, it helps to squint or step way back from your drawing, something that will give you the broadest view of what's next. As I create form. So I call these the minor plane changes. And again, I'm thinking, how would a sculptor deal with this? A sculptor has no choice but to deal in those big planes, those big masses. So here's the temptation. I've got a section of his cheek right there. It's on the light side, uh, but it is a half tone. Now, if I start staring into it at the exclusion of the rest, It'll start looking darker and darker and darker, and then I'll come in here and go kaboom. Now we've had some of these jump the fence. The Hatfields are intermingling with the McCoys, and confusion reigns. So I have to compare and make sure I don't let anything on the light side that's considered a half tone get as dark as what's really assigned as the shadows. I have a friend, um, Brian Liston. I don't know if some of you have heard of him, but he's really quite an amazing figure painter. But uh, when he does a demo, he'll ask his audience, do you want a good painting, or do you want to hear about it through the process? Because <laughs> I can't do both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of feel that way sometimes.
to talk and, and do the best work I can at the same time can be a little challenging. But I figured you'd rather hear about what I'm up to. I'm going to have a break in about five minutes. Okay. So, um, we're thinking form on a big scale, right? Big form, even the nose form. You break it down into something a little more planar and you go from there. But now when we get into features, we kind of think in the same terms, only in mini scale. Like the nose now becomes its own big form that then we start breaking down. But we want to make sure it's still a form, just like we wanted to make the head a form. Another example is the eye. So this, there's an eyeball underneath all of this that needs to be treated as a ball. It's an eye ball. So it's going to have light, halftone, shadow. So it's, it needs to turn as a form. Now remember, your left brain just likes to throw in a symbol. But we want to give more context to the form, and so we think of it as a ball. Now the same is true with the mouth. We want to think of it in terms of the shape of it. Not so much the detail of the lips, but what's the shape behind the lips? I don't know if you guys remember, I don't know how many of you have seen The Matrix, where uh, Keanu Reeves is being interviewed by Agent Smith. And he says, I know my rights, I want to make a phone call. And Agent Smith goes, how can you make a phone call if you're unable to just... You know, and then his mouth morphs into no lips. And I wish I could take a, have taken a snapshot of that. I'm going, that's what you want to do when you're drawing, because, yes, you can always add the lips, but what's the form under it? That's something that you need to take into consideration. And the form is going to be like the head. The head spun from shadow, halftone, light. The form underneath the lips are going to do the same kind of spin. So I want to represent that spin. And the lips can be on top of that spin. So you see how I'm keeping two concepts in mind at the same time? What's under the lips, and then what's the lips? So as I do that, I'm thinking, okay, so it's getting, a, this form is getting a little more light on this side, spinning into a little more halftone there before it terminates into the shadow. Below the lip is another mini cylinder, mini sphere, and so I want to give form So I gave form to the big stuff, big form, big form, big form. Now I give little form, little form, little form. But it's all the same thing. It's all form. And again, you can see how tangled you can get with all of that stuff. I'm having to, I mean, this, this is a little, Maddening to try and figure out the form behind all of that stuff. But that's gourd stuff. Can I see behind the stuff and make sure that I've got some solid planes going? And if I do, when I'm ready to put in all of that information, it'll flow in and it'll have a context and it'll read it as part of the big picture. So there's payoffs for me if I can ignore that stuff. Not easy to do because that stuff's screaming at me. But I have to stay true to what a sculptor is up to, and he's up to form. You know, the detail around the eye is screaming at me, but I have to ignore that in favor of the form. Is it? Fine. Okay. Okay. Do you 
you also sculpt? I don't. I, don't. <laughs> I, 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 I sculpted a little bit uh, and enjoyed it and would love to do more of it. I probably will at some point. Is that Antonio Banderas? <laughs> no. No? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs>